very important reviews uh, as always every single day. We have Mr. Chris Mandoka. Good to have you. Good morning. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, Chamalia. Good morning. Glad to be here again. It's another day. How was your weekend? Well, the weekend was fine. I slept alone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> believe that. I don't believe that. Well, as a, a manner of speaking, yeah. um, it's not good that a man should sleep alone. Indeed. Let's, uh, oh, take really? Indeed. He I mean, actually builds consecration. Please, can we... It's, it's not good a man sleeps alone, but I'm not too sure if it was because of Nigeria's performance at the Olympics. <laughs> well, uh, there are certain things that happen in Nigeria will make you try to say, it. let me have uh, some space. Let me sleep alone and think about it. <laughs> because there are certain things you can't... Nine billion naira. Mm -hmm. You know what you can do to Nigeria? A hunger and hardship. And it's just wasted. And the chairman was saying, we didn't even win stone. I mean, like, <laughs> pick the stone, go away, grab gravel, stone, oh, gravel oh, from the street stone. of France and come back with it. And <laughs> if you say it, a certain way, you think you are mocking anybody or you are being just, uh, you know, sinister, it's just like mocking us. But the fact is that we spend so much, we got nothing. The fact is, why are we joining bandwagon? There should be a policy at every time prioritized. When you say going to Olympics with so much delegates to spend this amount of money, somebody who is in charge will say, do we really have to, must we be there? Because Choma is already talking about 2028. Mm -hmm. By God's grace, the Olympics is a continuous game. But the life of Nigerians can't wait. A lot of people are dying. So nine, when we are talking about how many trucks of uh, rice this will send to the states, in as much as the one that was sent, we have not gotten it, or evidence that some states have gotten it. But at least it gives hope. My people say hunger that has hope doesn't doesn't kill. So if federal government keep promising us that rice is coming, even the forty nine thousand naira bag of rice promise is it gives Nigerians a lot of hope. Probably that's what quelled the hunger and hardship strike at that weight. So if what happened in the recent past continues and they say ah this is turning out to become another deception. You know, there's some people grew up and we start thinking again how to uh, put tension in the polity. We are saying we spent so much and got nothing. We should have prioritized from the word go. See. There's uh, endless Olympic Games coming. And why are we just trying to please the world? Who are we pleasing? Who are we trying to impress? If we did not attend, it would not be in the news more than one day. Mr. They would say Nigeria missing the Olympics. Beautiful. <laughs> but Mr. we are here not losing lives to hunger and hardship. Yes. Mr. Chris, yeah, beyond the fact that, yes, sir, we have an immediate cry of the house, I mean, of the country, of the nation, isn't it also a concern that Nigerians went to the, for this Olympics and met other Nigerians com that competed for other countries and won medals? At least I could mention like eight. Yemi Sida represented Germany. And she won a gold. She's, a, she's now the golden girl. We also have Annette. And these are people who tried to represent Nigeria, but weren't valued. So, yes, there is a factual cry of hunger and hardship. What of the va Nigerians learning to value their own? It's, it seems to be a problem. Like, we don't know how to value us. Let me put it this way. Like I said, People with a human, the natural human beings, they will want to serve only where they are appreciated. A lot of people, you see, somebody was giving analysis of a young graduate trained in Nigeria. From, from nursery school, he spent money in the system training a young Nigerian. After university, the person will hear that he jackpot away to another country. Who is losing? Now, we don't value these things and we are crying for our, Even some of these uh, dumb people who make uh, policies are for us here are not thinking about it. They prefer people who are intelligent that will challenge them to leave so that they help people to ransom and we'll be yeah. running around the circle. Nigerians are winning medals abroad. They are making statements. It's another form of protest. Yes. It's a pro I mean, it's just to show you, you don't value me. Beautiful. Uh, it's all, all, all good and well. I go to where I'm valued and I will deliver results. Just imagine how many Nigerians winning medals, gold for the countries. Yes. And yeah. they, 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 Nigerians are here. That's, it's not enough for us to consider that those people are at the Olympics and we say, let's our delegate not even be there at all. The issue of a Nigerian borrowing a cycle, bicycle <laughs> to compete for Nigeria. If somebody who is in charge had made statement that they swept it under the ground, 
Yeah. And they say nine billion. Somebody was saying twelve billion Let me was budgeted for this uh, uh, Olympics, and this is what we get. And it we in before this week ends, is everything about Olympics will have ended the same way every issue they raise in Nigeria will end, and we continue in a in a vicious circle of of dog eat dog rat race. Moving around the circle, why some people are coasting home with Commonwealth and nobody is asking them or bringing them to account? You know, Peter will be released a statement about this particular um, Olympics, you know, disaster uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I just want to read a part of that particular um, uh, statement he released on his ex handle. Mm -hmm. It says now that the Paris Olympics 2024 has officially ended and our dear Nigeria, despite the huge financial investments made into the project, is returning without a single medal, let me unreservedly register my displeasure with the performance of our team and their handlers. How can one explain that a country like Jamaica spent less than 5% of what we spent on our contingents for the Paris Olympics 2024 and won as many as six medals? Yet, with our huge financial investment and large contingents, we could not win even a single medal. At least nine African countries won gold, but the giant with over 200 million people came home without even a bronze. We invested about 12 billion in this year's Olympics, which is almost twice the amount budgeted for the entire Ministry of Science and Technology for this year. This is over 136 million naira. That's $85,000 spent on each of the 88 Nigerian contingents to the Olympics and no single medal was won. While Jamaica, a nation which spends far less that, than we did, a total of about $2,300 on each contingent, won six medals, one gold, three silver, and two bronze um, at the Olympics. Now, do, Rest do, my case. Do, do, do you think that um, the government should probe the amount, this amount that has been spent? Because it's a that has been budgeted and even paid. Let's even not talk about because it. Because it's, it's painful when you spend that kind of monies and we nothing is... I saw, True. I saw, I saw a which problem has gone in Nigeria the without spending more? So we have spent $12 billion. No result. Before you know it, they spend another $5 billion, probing $12 billion. <laughs> And nobody will going to ask questions. Are you going to set up probe? People who sit in panel we and I think have, you know, who the department of, of EFCC, ICPC, and they are not, they are not aware, they are not, they are not aware. Twelve billion was budgeted, even in the first place. There's some budget you give for certain things. That's where the EFCC and ICP should start. It's not after spending money. These are for some people. This is the opportunity they have. They will never go to Olympics again. Some people in the Ministry of Sports, all these eight, eight delegates competing, what in what in what categories? If you go, we go with your girlfriend and your side chick and all. <laughs> Everybody will get ticket on the federal government to go to Olympics. And they go there and they're paying them in dollars. That's est, uh, uh, what they call estaco. Est and then and they'll come back here when you're crying for hunger. And they'll just be somewhere laughing and drinking their whiskey. They're not interested. Nigerians have lost. There's no sense of patriotism because we are crying. That the same Nigeria is not presidency. It's not the governors, it's not the ministers. That are that 88 delegates. Evidently, corruption may have of the connection they have with these people I mentioned may have taken some people there. When they are, do, have no business, this opportunity for them to go to France on the riding on the shoulders of governors, ministers, and people who know who know who know. Who. And this is what we get. I tell you, the best thing is just for for us to lament and just keep quiet. Because if you talk about probe, if they tell you how much they will spend in probing twelve billion, <laughs> you would have said okay. It's, it's better they just don't bother about anything. Let's, let me just go. As everything that we have wished will leave us. Something that's as and easy as inviting maybe the minister or the, those who they release the money to mm -hmm. the Olympics committee. You just invite them, have question them. I, I don't think there's going to be too much to spend you well, know, in terms of probe. Well, them. in the past, you invited people before they get to the probe, they will go in crutches and faint. <laughs> and then we have drama. Before this drama is over, everybody will just forget it. The probes and probe and probe we have had in Nigeria, you have, where are the results? What, you had, what was the outcome? Who has been punished? That's a, a clip I watched about the former vice president of Nigeria, the much respected gentleman, was saying, our problem is what is happening in Nigeria happening in other countries. But the fact that it happens in other countries, they are punished. So people who are thinking about perpetuating crime, looking for the national cake to chop without accountability, they will see what happened to the man who chopped. 
Then we say, you, are you thinking about it? The last man who chopped national cake without accounting for it is in the gulag for 20 years. Then he will deter some people from this. We are just telling ourselves lies. I don't understand. That's what, it bothers me. Why do we get ourselves together and we're telling ourselves lies? Now you're talking about probe. Anybody who has a relation in the, in the delegate or connected with the Olympics, we're thinking they will pray in bad prayer for you. They will go for <laughs> say this boy, this is our turn. We have to, and he's asking for probe. When the other man did, who probe him? He will mention names of people who have uh, proven cases of corruption that have, what they did to compensate them in Nigeria to give them a bigger appointment. We had a perpetuate corruption. Because I, I think the athletes, I don't think we should uh, like rule them out entirely that they performed badly. Maybe, like you said, like was highlighted, like to even the bicycle riding and the person had to borrow. That means they didn't, they were not equipped. Is it possible that the athletes were not properly equipped? Or In the street of France, with this money, they can go out there and get a bundle of bicycle. In the street of France and give to because this this same bicycles they are using there would have some contractors in Nigeria would have even imported it from the same France. <laughs> and this in the, they find themselves in France. Because somebody has sat on this money and calculated how much they will go into his private pocket, they are not ready to spend the money budgeted and released. Now when you talk about though. when you have when you talk about people who went to there, these are the same hungry Nigerians who are facing hardship. Psychologically, are Nigerians ready for Olympics? We're just going there to sit down and say Nigeria is there. That's why I said initially we would have just seen the whole idea of going to Olympics and spend that money on the economy. Probably if it's part of what the president is telling us, I'm sorry that we did not approve our delegates to go to France. We are spending that 12 billion naira on the economy to cushion the effect of hardship and hunger, people will clap for him. Do you actually think it's a question of channeling it, not for the Olympics, but for the... If, if it's about mismanagement of funds, channeling it even to the palliative, for instance, they said there is uh, some trucks of rice or grains being mm. released, mm. but some states haven't gotten theirs, and it's over yes, a month. On the way. Yes, on the way. He's resting at a... Where, at which point? If it's, no, is this still federal? Oh, is, is this still no, Abuja no, that is no. left, or he left somewhere close to South Africa? Because the journey is taking forever. So, is it about changing the location, or I mean, ch changing um, what's it called? Uh, uh, changing it from Olympics to palliative, or about making key people that are responsible for handling this project or these funds to be responsible and people that are transparent. The money budgeted for Olympics wasn't wrongly budgeted. It was budgeted because Nigeria felt that there will cost Nigeria 12 billion to attend with eight, eight delegates or even more. Those are the ones that are their names are on the list. There are people who are on the list are still on the list of Nigerian delegates that are there. <laughs> Let's not go into that. The money was appropriately budgeted. But what we're saying is that you are saying that we're you just went in there, went in there, went there, that if you are just saying that if you had given it to palliative, that the money may see now. Well, yes. The new, it will be in the news. We know who to hold. We are saying, I've said here several times, let the governors come and hold me accountable. That I said they are part of the problem of Nigeria. So when we're talking about hunger and hardship, Nigerian governors should also be held accountable. If they are sure they release 20 trucks or load of rice, not to talk about 573 billion, that's no everybody's arguing. And they gave us, they didn't give us. Let them come out and make statement. So for keeping quiet, my people say if you keep quiet, it means yes. you agree. You, you are you, is a, a concession. Some Consented. governors have actually come out to say Find that it. that money was not actually monies from the federal government; that it was a loan from the from world bank i mean it's a did they get the money did they get the money did they get the so money? at yeah, this they, point they and where, is it where, where, where did they put the money were well, five seventy five seventy three billion dollar or mm. million dollar yeah, no. uh, in naira within a small state like let's say put a state which is the smallest state in naira a boy a boy small just or put that kind of that kind of money within a boy and Where see what state? what the life the life of people will change or trust drastically within weeks 
So we are saying the absence of that money, and now we leave the we leave the substance, and we're chasing the shadow. People are talking about whether it's a grant, whether it's a loan, whether it came from COVID nineteen, or go from COVID twenty or COVID twenty one. <laughs> it is not what we are asking for. We are saying, did you get this money? Account to people what the money was used for. That's all. The source and what or people. These are mean, a lot of money, meaning so much money is going from federal government or being facilitated by federal government to the states. And the states, they are costing on dry. Nobody is asking a question. I've not had any Nigerian wake up in the morning and said, the governor of my state should answer what he did with the money, even the, the money allocation coming from FAC. What did they do with it? Obasanjo, um, moving away from this particular mm -hmm. topic, Obasanjo says that it's accusing the National Assembly of fixing their own salaries. Yeah. Um, I think one of them have reacted. The Senate have also said that it's uncharitable to say that. Um, but Ugo Chinier, that's uh, the member representing the Diato the Imo State, said that, I mean, um, the RMFA, that is the Revenue Allocation and Fiscal Commission, are the ones that fix in this particular salaries. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that development? It's the same, the same pot that is boiling. You can't expect the National Assembly members to be jury in their own uh, case, the judge in their own case. They, they say you are earning much. If it become very clear, compared with all other salaries and emoluments in Nigeria, that are earning more, what we expect them is to begin the process of saying, okay, for the case of transparency and democracy, to please everybody, to make sure we have uh, given the punch and show you our hands that we didn't punch you with stone. Let them also go back to the, the commission that the uh, fix their budget and tell them, please, Nigerians are getting agitated. Begin to review our budget downwards, our, our, our what you call our emolument allowances and all. Because there are so much allowances for one single member of NAS that it will be, this amount of allowances that make up what it takes home every month is so much for one person, one, one small NAS at, member. At some point, they said they were going to cut down on their salaries by 50%. And recently, there has been proof, at least someone received, one of the senators received his um, a lot for July salaries, and he hasn't reflected. So it then means that maybe they have, may have lied to Nigerians. And mm -hmm. I think the reaction was that they have to go through bureaucratic systems in order to make, make that happen. It, it, it's not in my mouth you hear that Fada is wearing uh, trousers under the kaftan. What did happen is, if National Assembly will lie, it's on their head. That's the wahala. The money they're earning is so much. A lot of people have talked about that. Bringing down the cost of governance is part of the what you can do to bring uh, some kind of so called to the system and to the people. And they have not done that. And they keep saying that representing the people. If they are not sensitive and they become so insensitive and now begin to think who they are representing, because they should be the first set to say, Presidency, we have offered to do this. All this has become all we hear, political stories, politi no action. Because it was then that the first of all came and said, voluntary court for six months. And we sat down here and said, it's not enough to say six months. That means after six months, you recoup. Why not make it permanent? And some people are moving, are moving for part-time lawmaking uh, jobs in Nigeria. It's not, what are they doing that should be full-time and all allowances they even pay them to the point that even this they shoot the match on the floor they are paid allowance for it and when these things they say they are cutting down salary their basics might not be the issue we are talking about so much allowance newspaper allowance in 2024 amounting to millions of naira for one person when some of them are just with a click of their phone they will read how many newspapers did you bring here to read how much did you pay a punch for reading their newspaper and all that and somebody is taking allowance for, for, for getting newspapers on his phone and GSM, very expensive phone they carry even. Mm, they, bring, they, they bring it physically. And they bring yeah. it, must they bring it physically? Why are we doing <laughs> it? The 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 maybe it's a okay. spiritual okay. thing. I think you're working in the <laughs> <They> station. <should> <laughs> you're working in the <laughs> now, so I can see you are uh, you, you are trying to justify. Whatever way you want to justify is cut down. Let them receive it digital. Let's pay the digital <laughs> levy. Let them leave the physical one. Because it's still 2024. And the world is la laughing at us. That your uh, legislators still get uh, physical. Where did they store it? Where they store? We are talking about cutting down trees 
and the environment is heated up, and you are still more newspapers you have. Um, it's more importantly, it's, it's not just it's so not just about, about it's, not, Maduka, it's not just about mm. them getting the newspapers. Mm. Do they read these papers? Because at the end of the day, by the one month, if you're getting you're going to get like ten papers daily, mm. at the end of a week you have seventy papers. Mm -hmm. And do they even even read one? They, they're keeping those newspapers. They're keeping it for when they retire. When they leave the nation, they start reading them. They have to pile it up. They create a library that will occupy space. These are part of the property they acquire from being a... But what I'm saying is these are all ironical uh, th uh, behaviors that we... You see, we create more problems with the same mindset, hoping to solve it. It cannot be solved. It cannot be solved. Lead by example. Imagine when the what is happening around the world people are agitating everywhere and the, their government are responsive and, but in nigeria they wait until people begin to die when they are forced under gun, gun you know gunpoint to say denounce is that when they will do this but when um probably they are just saying this because i said uh, this man is shouting because he has not gotten an opportunity to go to this <laughs> assembly and, uh, is that what you do would you do that, that what I'm, that I'm saying i'm saying that <laughs> if you stop the culture of corruption stop it now if you get there you won't see opportunity to get corrupt <laughs> but if you allow it and get to my own tongue for instance that's when you start preaching begin now because the Bible says osita the more the bible if things begin to get better today, it started on good but time. But how can we get Nigerians to become patriotic? This, by changing their mindset. It starts with you. It starts with you and me. In our little corners, become think about patriotism and then start applying it. Because this change we are crying for, if it's not starting with me, it may just be a mere noise. So it has to start with you. Because individually, you come individually in a community will make up a community make up a hamlet make up a state make up a government make up a nation make up the world if we don't have changed persons some people at the national assembly they if you tell you what they spend to get there when you say it starts off with the individual what do you really mean because we have seen over time that the problem of this country the problem of the black nation is leadership i mean if the leadership does not change its attitude towards expenses towards earning monies towards you know divulging resources to different uh, strata of the economy and seeing that these divorces are actually meeting the the ends of what exactly the monies are actually being pushed for so if these monies are not put, put out and you see every day expense of monies large chunks of monies are expended at the end of the day these monies do not do not get to the poorest masses. And then you're telling the masses no, who are supposed to be on the level to where, change that's their where, attitude. That's where I think different. Uh, you are, you are I think different, the Charles. You are a leader in your own right. I am a leader in my own right. Choma is a leader in her own right. If in our own different small positions of leadership, we make a change. When we come collectively as leaders, uh, that change will manifest. But when you, you, like, you have little opportunity, people are on the road. We are in Nigerian uniform, uniform bought with Nigerian taxpayers' money. Gone, they're carrying gun, purchased with Nigerian taxpayers' money. They're harassing travelers, collecting bribe, openly. And they will tell you, some people or somewhere are doing it. If you stop doing it and Nigerians start seeing that these people are not doing it, they will stop. Even driver, carrying some, uh, in public, well, find well, opportunity well, of cheating. So every Nigerian Who is must in change. Charge of reorientating the Nigerian policeman not to collect bribe on the road. Who is in charge to reorientate Nigerians to making sure that they do what is right within their local spheres of living? We, Who we, is in charge we of are doing the that? We are the government and we can do it. You and me are the government. Nigerians have become uh, these uh, 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 set of people that they walk on the road every day, they use that proverb every day. They see chicken scattering human feces with their legs. They say, it doesn't concern me, it doesn't concern me. And they will stop at the nearest mama put to ask for chicken leg for lunch. And then I, I ask them, which chicken leg are you asking for there? Now, if you begin and traveling on the road, the policeman stops and he asks you, present your papers, you do everything you're supposed to do. And the man will see you are decent, you are very patriotic and you are presenting every information he asks you. And then when he say Roger, it's a language I don't understand, sir. 
and you are not in a hurry, you want to solve that problem. But in Nigeria, and the people even is the public transport, the people say this driver is stupid. Instead of having even the policemen or the people on the road, security forces, 200 naira, okay. is delaying um, us here. So they are adding and abating, thinking it will stop. Their children tomorrow will travel on that street. People will stop them and collect money. Nobody, but it starts somewhere when people say, we are tired of corruption. Okay. And uh, I am tired. For instance, I say I'm tired. I cannot get be involved. And people will look at me initially as stupid. But certain things will happen. Um, and then the next person joins me. The then another person joins me. We have a group. And we now say, stop corruption in Nigeria. We start pushing. And then people so we should be united in our front. Mm -hmm. um, however, there is this screeching headline that The Guardian has. It says yeah. the electricity tariff may spike over weak fiscal position as in 2.1 trillion naira subsidy. Uh, you understand also the writer, one of the writers say power plants may shut down as poor remittance threatens 6,000 megawatts target. And you heard Charles when you said about the fact that, uh, was it uh, Mexico, no, not Mexico, what's, what's the other? South Jami Africa so and, Jamaica. Um, no, South Africa no. and Egypt. Egypt, have, yes. You know, and to over 12,000, up to 12,000 megawatts. Mm. And Nigeria, the very giant of Africa, 6,000 megawatts. We've not been able to match it and go beyond. And now they're saying they're going to fall short. It's poor remittances, threaten 6,000 megawatts target. Your I told, reaction, I told a, story, a story of a, a, a family where mushroom killed their papa and their mama. Okay. And the, uh -huh. the villagers came and said, children, you have seen what killed your papa. You have killed, seen what killed your mama. Please, he says, it's mushroom. You just don't just run when you see mushroom. Make sure you, like the Bible say, avoid it. Just, you know, what they call, they say, from seeing, run, flee from mushroom. Now, another day came when the, the, the neighbor, neighborhood come, came and they saw these children in, during the lunchtime. They are they are holding mushroom in their hands. And one of the wise people said, children, what killed your papa? He said, mushroom. What killed your mama? Mushroom. So what are you holding in your hands? He said, mushroom. It's the case that people are talking about the, the, the hunger and hardship strike. The protesters are giving condition what the government should do. And they've not, that has not, they still, they, to a certain extent, some of them are arguing that those things have not been addressed. And the screech, a screaming newspaper headline is saying that power, energy, cost from electricity might hike very soon. A simple story of double wahala for dead body. And then even the plants, they, they want generating stations will close down because of poor remittance. That means, let us begin to say, Nigerians are synonymous with corruption. Let us not begin to even see that. That means these are people who mushroom kill their papa mm -hmm. and, as, and mushroom kill their mama. And the next morning we saw them with mushroom in their hands for, and they're preparing for, for, uh, for breakfast with mushroom. So if the demands <laughs> of the people haven't been met, mm -hmm. as in the demand, the reason for the protest hasn't been met, and uh, you know the government the government called that we're going to do this do that and all that but they haven't done it does it mean that nigeria has been scammed again no i won't be there is you know scammers have for real scammers we know in nigeria they always have their water they always nail their end so if you openly open your eyes coming uh, every day maybe for the thief one day maybe for the owner so if you count it as come go ahead scam. but one day even when we say EFCC and all the graft bodies agencies that may be slow, but they can they will always get to you one day and catch you. Probably when you fail one day, because a criminal will always leave a a, 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 a trail. So if you have scammed the 200 million Nigerians or more than again by just going round and round and not addressing the issue raised, just be oh that um, he who uh, has uh, eaten. Uh, his uh, people for dinner as he went to bed with an empty stomach because one day one day one day he will go market and not go return this is your analogy on mushroom mm. i'm actually very interested in it what if the kids who have the mushrooms are now looking to make sure they solve the problem of the mushroom not killing them by no, eating the idea it. is by eating <laughs> is it by eating it they are using their two legs to tense the depth of ocean uh, well, of his uh, water maybe this time around not basically eating it 
cooking it, boiling it, and maybe using it for medicines. These are, th you are you, I can see Charles, you belong to Gen Z. <laughs> the Gen Z want to subject every proverb of Africa to, 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 to pr this kind of analysis. But then the fact remains that when you uh, it's a flee from 90 million flies cannot be wrong. Flee from mushroom because it kills you. Because any slightest thing, you become a, a case of fatality again. You might not come out of it. So why experimenting with it? When you saw them with it, they were they wearing masks, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they were also wearing hand gloves so that they would they would not not touch. These are people holding mushroom at a very compromising position, showing that they have taken so much bites of it. That's what they say. But if you see them in the lab with a microscope testing to see what makes a mushroom dangerous, you see these people are planning for their future. But they just stand them in a dining table, in a table, a dining table. Position mushroom for another bout of feast, and you say that's what they're going to experiment with. That that's suicidal. It's suicidal. If you they catch them in the position of experiment, you will know. But if you catch them in the position of committing suicide, that means could be another solution. Nothing is happening. We are talking about hunger and hardship. Fuel, fuel is costly. Then they say even cost of electricity might come. So you find some Nigerians who said. Well, if it's the same mushroom that killed a palm, let me eat it and die. <laughs> <laughs> and just Kukuma leave this what? nation. Because this nation, if we were not problem to this nation, then this nation is problem to us. Absolutely. You know, uh, you, you what hear... What do you think, really, yeah. about the prices of um, the increased rates that we're facing right now with uh, electricity? Do we have people who have complained separately about the rates being increased? But the NERC is also saying that you can't be asking us to give you constant power supply without paying for it if you go everywhere we talk about the places that you have constant power supply a place that is even here as close as ghana now have relatively you know stable power supply they pay so much for power power is not cheap so isn't that justifiable that the ministry is shouting that look you have to pay more for us to be able to sustain the infrastructure that gives you power in a plant society there's one this proverb of the let the biggie fish the big fish, you know, collect the bigger portion of firewood. Let the small fish collect. You know, when in a situation, there are certain organizations that pay for certain local, gov uh, local communities because they say pro poor. Whenever you are setting tariff, that's what they call pro poor consideration. In all, if you want to set water rate, you think pro poor is a is a unit in every organization that going through reform. So if power and energy is going through reform in Nigeria, and there's no pro poor consideration well, i think there is this band a uh, to band, e. band b band a, most of the poor people are, are they've not uh, segregated them and put them in bands no, where they, they have, stay they now band d, band but the 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 people b. distributing power has separated yes. bands. now how do you know which band you, i don't even know which band i belong to but in my the place where i stay a lot of people are shouting that what you find with there are two set of meters electricity meters that exist now in nigeria there are people that are using the old ones. That one with, uh, let's say, 20,000 naira, you survive a month. There are people, there's some meters with 70,000 naira in their new meter. They, are, they, are, they, can't, they can't last for 20 days. Really? Yes. And I've seen, I can pr follow me to where I stay. The new I'll meters. show you. The ones they say the new meters, they mounted them separately. The old ones. And the, e e the, the electric the distribution companies, the electric distribution companies are still fighting to move those ones that they say feel that <laughs> it doesn't run fast. <laughs> so they, you know, they, some people somewhere in some state have gone to court to stop them from facing that meter away. But they are doing all they can to, to face, face it, it away so that they will go on the fast lane meter. The one that runs 70,000 naira a month in a, a, a three bedroom flat. With very people, how many people use their fridges these days? What do you easy when you put something in the fridge, you, <laughs> you refrigerate. So people are now managing to get light fan, even in the the hottest weather. Certain families do not use a condition if they are, if they used before. So they begin even you get to a point where Nigerians, as a father, if I'm going to work, I carry my. But they're not giving us. They're not giving us that kind of car the user abroad or the one you use in hotels. Where mm. you slot it down, like yes, when you are going, you say you look at the eye of your children. So if I come back, <laughs> this light will not. You just carry it and put it in the pocket. I ask him, Father, where is the the meter? I say, look for it, and you go. So that you come back in the evening, you find you use fan to sleep. Well, this is what we want. Nigerians, they were not planning for us. 
sustainability pay as you consume. Some of our uh, these billions are so suicidal that you, even when you do not use it, you pay. Maybe for now, they should give us the card that once you put it on, there's light when you remove it. So that if you want to, but go it's to not possible that if you don't use it, you, you it won't go, go off. Like if you don't use it, you buy power. Most you don't people, use it, you most, they've not off. proven it to us because I say a lot of things are hidden. <laughs> so some charges, it, some charges are. Still, still they, it is possible that if you the, the, that that light is on, once you charge, once you put the card and remove it, the light is there. So you are not in control. <laughs> You can come back and see one one unit of light. Come back and if it is zero point five, and you know, when did I use this light? It becomes you question that well, you must go to the charge. Nigerians are not carried along. There's no enlightenment. How many electricity distribution companies has called people a customer forum to explain? So it's the issue of accountability yeah, and yeah, transparency. Even the telecom companies, it was recently they say they are they're even doing some hidden charges. I've had it. It's only in Nigeria I hear those two that people are. <laughs> Now the charged. charges are hidden. <laughs> and the, the government hears it and they keep quiet. And these organizations are costing home dry last money to the banks with huge budgets and we are striving and struggling and but to survive. What, what do you think influenced it to for the charges to be hidden? Why and they confidently will say they are hidden charges? <laughs> Somebody could what? openly say is charging you, you know, incognito. <laughs> <laughs> Charging wow. you, hidden, and then government will hear. Regulated body knows. NCC is about hidden charges of telecom. Has it come to the public or the, and said if you charge my what? people hiddenly? <laughs> that I will, I will no, but come, why we're laughing? But, you. but why we're laughing is not funny. There are why hidden, a lot of hidden charges in Nigeria allowed? We, pay, we don't even know. That's, what, but that, that's the point. Why is this allowed? Is it because Nigerians they we are been seen you know uh, speculations that like nigerians are being seen as cowards does it mean that nigerians no, are really cowards no, it's, it's just a, a, a matter of uh, cowardice uh, iron and uh, dog eat dog you know is in a in a state of nature the 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 survival of the fittest if i need in an environment where because of this idea of uh, weaponizing poverty if charles can afford to go on a public transport he wake up in the morning going to work already told you that the charges for, for transport is probably 200 naira from one uh -huh. point to another. You wake up in the morning, they tell you it's 500 naira. And you look at Charles as a fellow, uh, uh, you know, uh, traveler to say, we cannot enter. Then Charles will push me and say, poor man, get away. He will pay 500 and go. So he starts to say, Nigerians, they put us. <laughs> so you look, open your mouth and say, oh, so he's a survivor of the fittest. You go and find a way to raise 500 naira and pay. Otherwise, nobody is going to fight for you. The people who are our at the point but, but, uh, uh, home of leadership in nigeria know about these things and they're not talking anything about it again you know just like what we used to have in the telecom sector where um there was this monopoly that existed at some point mm -hmm. but because the that place was unbundled and we had investments in that particular um department uh, we had people who can decide to you know go to other you know telecommunications in case this one doesn't work for them or mm -hmm. maybe that one is more, much more expensive at some point the particular network told us that there wasn't anything like a per second billing and it was per minute billing but that particular network came and broke the jinx and that network that said that there wasn't anything like per, per second net network mm -hmm. came into per second billing so I'm thinking don't you think that the Ministry of Power in collaboration with the NERC is actually looking to see if they can get investments into you know this sector for instance in as it stands in in this zone southeast we know that it is the eedc alone that supplies power if if power goes off today eedc is the one that is responsible you cannot say okay you know what i'm tired of using eedc you are too expensive let me you know migrate to another where well, if you have investments of people other businesses coming into it you know, you can decide to move from one particular uh, yeah. infrastructure to, to it, another. It, in, the experiment, in the don't forget the Abai experiment of uh, Professor Bart. Right. N is it Bart and Naji? Yes. With his um, new, um, what is the power company that is experimenting. If that one works very well, maybe others will crop up. But you know, the, power, the problem of loan individual investors like that, the challenges, the kind of challenge Dangote is having. When over time corruption has become a culture, a culture. So we are the the bigger people control everything. So when there is want to introduce uh, market regulation and uh, uh, competition, 
they fight back. They fight back. If uh, what a by experiment of power works, there should be probably a new experiment on each experiment and new experiment and over time. And nothing is going to continue. We well, want to see when people begin to make demand. Because if a bar works very well and people see that it's even cheaper, affordable, and the same light you're getting, and you're paying less. Even when you are asked to pay more, you now have a choice. The then side. the people, choice is what makes it right in democracy. Yeah. But in Nigeria, we are still using government structures to power monopoly of individuals. That's happened over time. Not minding that they're, they're now. The, the people the people who are playing games together are now quarreling and we are getting to know about some information. Before now, it used to be business as usual. They sit over lunch and dinner and discuss their issues and the way as common people are. But then when the prayers of 200 million Nigerians are causing, you know, people are causing earthquake and uh, storms in their camp, and uh, their councils now turning into that of a heat of fear, like the Bible, <laughs> and they are fighting themselves now. So that's why we get to know. So we pray that along the line with the move on. The only thing is that we are moving on that is a, a slow pace because our eyes in Nigerians have opened so much. We have tested what good life is in other countries of the world. So we are expecting so much from our government. Even our leaders have traveled abroad and they find themselves living good life. Why can't they give it? It's not asking for too much. You let's begin to take this corruption thing because that's the only thing that has made us our growth slow. It has slowed down our growth. And we think by making so much from our people that we're making progress. No, we only find ourselves running around the circle. Running around the circle. And reaching some other countries of the world where we go to store these funds. Hmm. <laughs> That's one of the great... Some people in Nigeria get corrupt. When the, the EFCC and others find the money circling around Nigeria, they go and arrest them. But the ones who stored our money in Swiss banks and <laughs> have not been arrested... So you begin to ask, what, which one is the better option? Steal our money, spend it here, so that we get a portion of this, or steal it, send it abroad. But whichever way, stealing is stealing. And whatever is bad is bad, no matter who do it. On page 29 of The Guardian, uh, it screams that uh, Edo Refinery decries NMPCL failure to supply crude. Where the crude in Nigeria is supplied, I do not know. The people at home are crying they don't get crude so which one we, who do we supply the crude that's that, what baffles me because every refiner in nigeria is crying that they're not getting it so who is getting it? who is getting the crude because the crude is not underground anymore let them then steal it and send it to the ones that are stealing let them direct divert it to or let even these people cry let them go and steal too is it because they is say it, I, the kingdom of uh, God survive violence. Are you also of the opinion that maybe Nigerians should set up a panel, you know, where all our leaders will be put? Panel again. <laughs> <laughs> panel. Is that a, okay, if you said no. you and Charles are making members of panel, is another way of changing your life. The next thing I will see you riding in Prado. Government, <laughs> FGN, Richard Prado. To you attend think the so? Pra yeah, because you'll be paid to sit to probe. And then I, I, I just want to do it on pro bono. We <laughs> set pro bono panel where people come and um, no, we'll do it on pro bono actually. Yeah, uh, yeah I see. I look into your eyes Aye. and I see pro bono <laughs> pumping out. But the idea is that I don't believe in so much of this probing, yeah. probing, probing yes, because yeah. it's another. Because um, who are the people probing who? That is. Uh, so if I am probing myself, what's the what's the guarantee that except I'm someone of integrity? That's why I said. The guarantee that I'm let's gonna ask be ourselves questions. We decide. To really make a change Unle until we do that one million pro probe not one million man match you don't misquote me <laughs> it's a one million man probe committees can solve the problem of nigeria unless Can't solve. we begin it cannot because we are still solving that problem with the same con mindset that is causing it everybody is going to nigeria as a as a detached individual void of patriotism and going to national cake this is an opportunity. What I've been praying for since I have an opportunity now to serve in Nigeria, any of the agencies in Nigeria. And if you see how I'm going to dispose things. Um, I change the test for things in general. We change my disposition of things in general. We change. I begin to live a larger than life kind of lifestyle, trying to booger and show people that I've arrived. And I go to probably, if I attend the same church with you, my Ubidia to go to Thanksgiving with me while I clap and talk in loud voice that God has blessed me as, as I'm a prayer. Police is actually arresting protesters. 
yeah. and charging them for cybercrime, uh, cultism. Um, in Borno, they arrested 99, and uh, they're charging them for murder and vandalism in Borno State. And, on and I'm wondering, really, um, is it? Are you thinking one and thinking, Charles? I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> okay, I don't know also where you're coming from. Is it that they're arresting them, and they have very clear evidences that they're just protesters, and they're and they're lumping uh, these uh, charges on them? No, but again, yeah. I saw. A video of protesters destroying slabs and taking away the iron in Kano at yeah, least yeah I mean that one is not protest now you can count that as protest so I also, also saw people who, who beat people who were also counter protesting so maybe they have a reason to you know charge link them it because yeah, so Charles, if, uh, I arrest, if I arrest somebody if, who is if destroying we're, what we're looking at he said because what the charges are cultism mm -hmm. cyber crime mm -hmm. cultism Cyber crime. Is it that I it, arrested remember, you protesting and suddenly I find out that you were a member of a cult group or uh, that you have been practicing? You how remember how do they, those cases they establish? The, the cyber crime thing could be that some people who are online you may have been caught um, pushing an agenda that was probably negative to the Nigerian government. If you put out something online that is negative and is a tremendous to the unity of the Nigerian state, I mean, you can be actually. Uh, let it, uh, let it not be. Let it not be the calling dog bad name to do to murder it. That's mm -hmm. my concern. Mm -hmm. If they are sure the people that arrested committed the crime, of course they are not uh, guilty unless they when they prove them otherwise. So they are just suspects now. So if they, you arrest a suspect and you raise case and, uh, against the person, you know, established case. If after going through the process, the person is found guilty. He will serve the necessary sanction that is constitutional. It's not going to be uh, those sanctions you generate to punish them because mm. they they, are, they have sympathy for the hunger and hardship strike. Because it will mean killing Anto with mallet, <laughs> shooting your plantain with double barrel gun. <laughs> now you they lose though, because it can backfire. And nobody should say uh, harvest his plantain, a mature plantain with a double barrel gun. To just to prove a point, <laughs> it can re re ricochet back and um, become another weapon of destruction. So, go to Ekuti with clean hands, Nigerian police. Make sure what happened in recent past, you know, continue in recent future. What brought NSAS, NSAS protests was this kind of linked thing, the link of police intimidation of young people with bogus charges, and uh, you catch them, you search their laptop, if they had phone, you without a warrant of arrest, you do, you seize their phone, some of them you take them to uh, ATM and transfer money, or uh, if they refuse, you lay charges and drop guns in their bags and tell their criminals, these are some of the facts we have had, only them. The Igbo say, If you are bathing with your clothes on, now you know yourself. Mm -hmm. So the police only mm -hmm. people who answer this, and they have to be transparent and accountable to show that what is happening is not, they're not, they are not like uh, when people say you are bad, you come and prove to them you are bad. They want to uh, set you on fire. You go and they bath yourself with, uh, with fuel or kerosene. It, it, you are just uh, setting your, if you are just hasting your death, let it be that is not what I'm thinking. Let mm. it be that they are sincere and they are arresting these criminals for the charges put against them. And then they go through the proper court session. Let them be tried. Let the, all the evidences established against them that they are criminals. And then charge them. And that's, that's and we're not protecting anybody. But let, what happened at times is that the link to hunger and hardship protests will weaken that case. It will be like they are underdogs. Where were you before now? Why is these charges being trumped up now against them? That's the question some reasonable Nigerians will ask. Because it will sound as if a cry of a drowning man. Uh, you know, you didn't cry when the, the thing was starting. Not crying and this, trying to pull people together. You know, the struggle of a drowning man, dying by a drowning man. It could be. Let the police not get involved in such things because it can be dangerous. It can be dangerous. All right. Um, I think there's a headline we may have missed. Um, former Vice President Osi Bajo mm -hmm. uh, said that um, if churches can shift their attention mm -hmm. from preaching 
on uh, prosperity rather than you know um, preaching uh, shifting the attention from preaching prosperity or preaching hard work over prosperity mm. that would actually uh, be a risen country that, that, that's, that's wonderful but to be a Christian is not to be stupid to be a Christian, they are gone at the days where things are, eyes people are opening, if they don't tell them that as a Christian you can be prosperous, you can ride on jeeps and for SUVs, you can own houses and those things. Then you, their eyes will not start opening to people who own houses and they, how they get it is another one, whether they get it illegitimately or not. So preaching that as a child of God, you have the right to also be rich. It's not about preaching, but preach that you can be rich following the the right uh, channel that's what i think uh Subban Deutsch, the much respected Subban Deutsch said and uh, i i go with him I go, don't preach one leave the other because it become one-sided preaching uh, prosperity i see somebody in the midst of this church who are going to ride home with the suv car you, and you didn't come to church with suv car whose one are you riding <laughs> or that you start driving and imagining that you're driving and there's some people will practice and they get out of you we park your car they enter to try they're not probably not so you catch them and say they're still start from the word go but if you preach the society is it also giving the people you are preaching is it giving every young person Nigerian opportunity to pursue their destiny and the fight to fulfill their destiny in a free Nigeria where chances everybody is given the same platform of equality and equity? Is it that the only the favored children of the 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 the, 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 the rich are, are enjoying and the children of the poor are struggling through their life? If you are preaching hard work, employ two of us, give us work to do. Pay us. Let the jobs of Nigeria not be reserved to only the children of the 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 the, the, the high the way to do. And the, these are the people who go to church every day. You are preaching hard work, hard work, hard work. <clears throat> and some people who have are still in Nigeria dry are costing home. All right, Mr. Chris Monica, many thanks for your thoughts today. We truly appreciate you. It's been one full hour of the headlines and the reviews today. We're back shortly for a very important discourse. Just stay with us.